Welcome back. You are still watching RTV News. I am Ivan Munyengango, your guest anchor tonight. In other stories making headlines globally, Israeli police say 300 people have been arrested after violent confrontations with Palestinian, Palestinians at the Arkasa Mosque compound in occupied East Jerusalem. This comes after police raided the compound in early hours of Friday as thousands of worshippers gathered for morning prayers. At least 150, 150 people have been injured in the violence. We have this report courtesy of Al Jazeera. Now, most of you are wondering why I have Ivan or Eva Munyengango in the studio. Eva is a certified strength and conditioning coach for athletes and professional trainers for non-athletes clients as well. Possibly, he's one of the best personal trainers in Rwanda. Eva is also a genocide survivor. Why did I invite him here? Last week, during the first week of the commemoration of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, Eva walked and jogged for over 40 kilometers from Kigali to Jichumbi, a distance he last covered in 1994 while escaping killers who were hunting down Tutsis to be killed during the genocide. And thanks for joining us, Ivo. Thank you for welcoming. Now, most people actually know you as a trainer and a coach. Um, how best can you describe yourself? Um, I would say I'm a fitness in entrepreneur because I'm involved in uh, uh, various activities uh, in, within the fitness area, yeah. but also as of uh, recently, a little bit in agri-trade. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's talk about the trip, uh, you know, the work and the jogging, a lot yeah. of jogging, actually. Yeah. If you want to know a bit of the details, go to his Instagram page. Uh, he's called Ivan Munya. Munye. Yes. Ivan Munye. You'll get what I'm talking about. The trip, how did you come up with the idea? And if you could tell us a little bit about your history as well. Um, the idea basically um, was inspired by the 25th year of uh, the commemoration, 28th yeah. uh, year of the commemoration. We, when I started originally, I wanted to do just 28 kilometers, uh, uh, just to go there. And um, it was my first time. I've been wanting to do this, to do this trip and go back in these streets uh, for so long. And uh, only this time, uh, I felt like I wanted to take my friends, a few friends uh, with me. Yeah. I wasn't alone. And um, it was just for going there and remember and try to see if, um, obviously, uh, sceneries have changed. Yeah. Uh, the gardens and, uh, on the hills are better, trees and, 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 and so forth, and bridges. And, but there are still these uh, remarkable um, uh, places yeah. and uh, that, that sort of um, trigger, uh, uh, I mean, obviously these, uh, you, you get to places and the, the, there are memories. And uh, uh, each memory has an emotional reaction. So you, you, as you are walking, as you, you're going through these uh, extreme physical conditions, um, you also get to to relive, uh, but obviously, the, the, because of this, uh, um, um, these many years that have passed, it doesn't have the same effect as as, as, as used to. Um, but it was a very important trip to do, and I will do it every year, and I will add a kilometer every year. How old were you during the genocide? And if you could tell us briefly the memories that you have, you experienced uh, uh, during the genocide uh, journey. I was about uh, to turn six, seven, so yeah. I was six. And um, what I remember about that road in particular, the, 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 I've been to other places also uh, during, but it was within the Byumba uh, yeah. uh, dist uh, no, district. Uh, what was it? Jichumbi district. Jichumbi district, but now. Was Bimba, yeah. yeah. And um, so that, at that, uh, that young, uh, me and my sister, um, who uh, were visiting a family friend uh, when uh, this whole thing started, and uh, so we were shown the road to go to with the RPA uh, army at that time. And um, the trip was like in the night and then during the day we would go into the sugarcane plantations. Uh, it was like about three days. And um, you can imagine for a six year old that is carrying uh, 
uh, a bunch of stuff in the head, uh, needed or not needed, I don't remember really, but uh, it was quite a trip, yeah. It's only now that I sort of um, um, understand it fully. I mean, obviously, the, when yeah. what you're running from is behind you, you, you the motivation is greater as, as, a, as a kid or as an adult. Uh, but it, it's, it's even harder now uh, uh, to, to do it physically. But uh, I'm glad I did it. You're glad you did it. Yeah, yeah. Your sister is still alive? She's still alive, yeah. Your family? Uh, my Idiot. siblings, yes. But we, we, we just lost parents and, and yeah, by my, we, we are four and yeah. uh, I have two, three other siblings. Yeah. In one word, what does Kwibuka mean to you? Kwibuka, it's a strange time because it's that time whereby you wake up every morning of these 100 days and you kind of live in the past. You are in the present, you are grown, you have achieved so much and uh, you know you are no longer that person and you know that the threat is no longer weighing on your shoulders. But uh, it is a memory that carries so much emotional reaction attached to it that, that is so, that you relieve almost every day when you go to Twitter, when you go to Instagram, when you go to these social media and people, and when you watch news yeah. or when you participate in gatherings and commemoration events. Um, so it helps? It, it helps. Uh, it, means, uh, it means a lot. So it, it's good to see that, uh, um, that there is not just Rwanda, but also the world that, it, that contributes to make this uh, uh, an, uh, an event that, that will forever be here because it's the only uh, thing we have left we can do to our lost ones. Yeah. That's strong, my brother. On a very lighter note, as we end this, um, during the early days of the pandemic, you were so vocal on social media about the reopening of gyms. Yes. How has it been uh, 2022? It's much better, yeah. obviously. There are still things, uh, small little restrictions here and there, and other things we try to advocate for, that we're inspired by uh, the closure of, of that period. But um, we are now back fully, uh, gyms are open, uh, and uh, we just wait for Rwandans to, to fill up. Please do fill up, go work out. Yeah. We had two years of eating and not working out, so yep. we surely need to do a bit of working out. So you are the CEO and founder of... Uh, Kali Kali Fitness. Kali Fitness. So, I mean, check him out, Ivan Munye, on social media, especially Instagram. You'll get a lot of what he does. You know, you can see. Surely you can see and you can tell. <laughs> if you need that, get in touch with him. And for me and the entire news production team, that's all we had for you tonight. Until next time, I'm Ethan Tashabia and, of course, my guest anchor, Ivan Munyangango, Ivan Munye. We say goodbye for now. <laughs>